not gotten an answer from Elder Rumel Test District. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Um, John reached out to them this morning to ask for an update or just some sort of status. And, okay. Uh, as of a few minutes ago, they have not answered him in any. Nothing. Yeah. Okay. Not even a, not even to say sorry. He didn't, he didn't get picked. Just crickets. Well, as, just, crickets as they say. Yeah. <laughs> so, there we go. Yeah. We haven't forgotten about that. It's okay. Just, that's where it's at. Mm-hmm. Why is this not doing this? You know what? I'm gonna close this. I agree. I'm not familiar with this. this. I'm not familiar with this either, really. Starting my video. Start my video. Hey, Jerry, you hit a flash. There we go. Hey, Tina. Yes. Wait. Tina. Oh. I, it seems to come in and out almost like there's a, a connection that's not working right. And now I'm getting reverb. So what we're going to do, Tina, we're going to kind of take you on and off mute because we're going to stay muted to let we're going to stay muted to let you talk. And yeah, that you, works. You know what I'm saying? So I, I know what you're saying with the echoing thing. Um, so. There we go. I moved this over on purpose. It's okay if I don't show up. Oh, no, it's okay. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> okay. Much better. It's helpful to put names to faces. Yeah. So let me do some let me do some introductions. Um, you met me already at the uh, at the district convention. Um, now I'm gonna, and this I'm is gonna Pastor talking, now. right? Yeah, this is Pastor talking right now. Uh, Don Don just uh, waved. That's Don. You talked to him on the phone. This is Bev. She's our uh, preschool child care director. She's going to be taking the the lead on the horn on most of these uh, most of the initiative. And then Allison is with us. Now, Allison and Don have been great about um, helping us with grant writing and such. And that's kind of what got connected. So what I want to do is offer a word of prayer. And then I want to just kind of let you kind of give uh, an overall picture. And I know Don, Don had a bunch of questions. So like I said, we're going to take you on and off of mute um, just so that you won't get the reverb so bad. All right. That sounds, sounds great. great. God, I want to thank you so much for our time together. And I thank you for uh, bringing us here. And I just want to say, Lord, we know that you have something very special in mind for your children in this community. And I just pray for each and every person here and uh, Tina on the other side. Lord, I just pray that you would give to us wisdom and guidance in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So... Let me get our, my mute button ready. And I, okay. Nope. I'm wondering if visually I'm going to see when you're muted. So I'm going to think so. Don or, or Bev, can you give me a thumbs up if, if, if you can hear me okay? Okay, we got gotcha. you. Um, so I, I'm going to tell you first that my style either is going to frustrate you or we're going to have a great time of discovery together. <laughs> um, I come as a coach and not as a consultant, which means that I don't bring expertise, but rather I bring it in the posture of a coach. And what I mean by that is um, that my goal isn't to tell you what to do or how to do it, but rather help you discover and find the language of how you're going to do that. Uh, where God's leading, help you explore strategies that maybe you haven't considered before, help think through those incremental steps of engaging people, developing relationships that really leads to full engagement in, in the body of Christ, and help you explore maybe potential partnerships that you haven't considered before, 
Um, maybe just as some background, I should tell you, I didn't, I wasn't raised in the faith. I didn't grow up in the church. I came to faith as an adult. And so, um, and I just really I have a passion for Jesus and recognized uh, a disconnect sometimes in how we communicate to people who are outside the church. And so I take what I call a, a grace-oriented entrepreneurial approach to ministry development. Uh, I'm trained in the LCMS. I went back to school in my 40s to get a master's degree in Christian outreach because I just couldn't figure out why my church was shrinking. And <laughs> this was the best thing ever. Um, and then I went on to pursue coaching training. So I'm credentialed with the International Coach Federation. So just some credentialing things. Uh, but when I say that I take a grace-oriented entrepreneurial approach to ministry development, um, I'm not thinking first about what program we're going to create. I'm thinking first about what the community self-identifies as what they think they need. And then helping to clarify what problem are we solving or what gain are we hoping to create rather than just plowing forward and developing a program so that what ends up getting developed is really meaningful for the community and so that we can create in a way that the community says yes i i, I want that um, I also think about through the lens of what kingdom value are we bringing to the community and engaging them in. And then what I have realized the longer I trek at this, that I'm a connect the dots person. I get all the pieces and figure out where they connect. So helping them fall strategically in that step-by-step -step process that helps lead to the intended outcome. So I'm going to push pause and let you guys come back online and maybe just respond, ask any questions or smart aleck remarks if you'd like. I'm, I'm, my question is, we didn't do per se a community survey to find out what those needs are. It's something that we just kind of know is needed, but is that required that we have surveys and statistics and that type of thing? No, not necessarily. I mean, you're, you're putting in a grant summary proposal. So, you know, and that sh deadline is very short. Um, so to get this in a, in a form that you've got it in two pages saying what you need to say, you know, that's a, that's a short term thing. Uh, what Pastor and, and Don and I talked about was the potential of, if this goes forward, maybe working with you on an ongoing basis um, to really do the grant application and develop the other pieces of it. Okay. Uh, so the thing is, um, we need to get to the, um, you know, to that level by having a successful summary proposal. And so you and I talked about, you gave me some great ideas and all, and that I brought those back to our group here. And then what you have in front of you is the latest iteration of that, put it in the format that the LCEF stipulates it has to be. And this stipulates the kind of questions they want answered. So I guess one of the outcomes I'd like to have from this is, is to react to what you see in front of you. You know, we did a demographic study that's been out, that the Synod has these available. And so yeah. we came, uh, Actually, as Pastor, as Pastor Whitfield came with the idea of, of a summer camp, and we have something of that now, but this is a much broader scope and much more uh, a grander scheme based on some of the work by George Barner, reaching students, and reaching children, and giving them something exciting, and then weaving in a really great Bible study. So that's kind of what that what we would like. We think we need, and we, and we have a sense that the community here would like to have that, but we haven't done any broad surveys asking, you know, asking people, you know, what are the, you know. Sure, and in the long term of developing this, those are things that will be important to probe um, that will help you get to that place. Um, for the purpose of this conversation, we don't need to do all of, that doesn't all need to be in place. But I wanted you to know these are the lenses that I think through when I think about working with teams and how I work with teams in, in developing ministry. 
So my question is, I guess a little bit more direct. What do we need to change or do differently in the proposal that Don sent? Yep. Okay. So um, a couple things, and it may be. And Tina, it, let me fill this fill this in because at our last discussion, when we all got together, I used the simple word hook, because everything needs a hook that they feel like they can get themselves into. So as you kind of go through that, if you can just keep that in mind, what would be a repeated thing, hook, something that would make it unique and special? And I think the essence of that is, is in what I call a value proposition of really what are you bringing to the community? And if I can just be super candid about this, what you have is great information in here um it didn't tug my heart yet it's all the the capacity is there but i'm looking for something to tug my heart and say mm, this is it so can i take a coach approach and probe some of those things that might help you put language to it yes please okay um don't wordsmith it. Put your put your pencils down a minute and just close your eyes a sec and think about this camp. And if you trail it out after after camp season is done, maybe you've had a few seasons. What really is the hoped for outcome? What do you want to see as a result of having this Christian camp? More kids and families knowing Christ. Life change. Okay. So what does so what that look that like? I suspect more uh, more sons and daughters of the congregation going into uh, careers in, in ministry and, and church uh, church areas, taking leadership roles. Uh, in other in secular endeavors with a Christian focus, I, I would say. I want this camp to be something that kids will think about five, 10, 15 years later mm -hmm. and how meaningful it was to them. And what would they have experienced that would make it meaningful in the way that you're describing? I sense that one, that one camp counselor that really made a positive impact on that one kid, spiritually speaking, the one that was in college, now this 12 year old, really connected well with him. I think we discussed the idea of Christian leadership as a may as a, 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 a our first discussion and I put that into the you know we'll try to weave that in so the idea would be that you're developing leaders at multiple levels here one is of course that the, the, the student the fourth uh, four year old or ten year olds at being experiencing a, a great exciting camp but also having a great exciting message Bibles and Bible uh, study piece of it in the middle of it and also the students in college and high school that you recruit to be the leaders and mentors in the various activity groups, you're also developing leadership at that, that level as well. So I think that would play to Pastor Whitfield's point that, that we're going to be engendering and, and, and creating a culture of leadership here, which is gonna just bl blossom, mushroom out, and, and then you're gonna have these wonderful experiences that individuals are gonna have in this camp because they're gonna remember that great student from this you know, Concordia, this great student from here or there, coming in through and, and being a, a, a great uh, mentor, you know, and role model, Christian role model for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what are they experiencing at the camp? The, the theme that's in my mind is a camp kids want to come back to. And so that says not just as participants, but maybe as leaders. It's a theme in my mind. So, so what in the experience, Pastor Whitfield, you, you said that 
the part the camper would connect with maybe connect with a counselor that makes a big impact on them what are they experiencing beyond that what are they experiencing that that is going to draw them to come back so what they're experiencing energy fun um and a and a quality interaction with jesus for lack of a better term or that is the term something that is so that is so well-rounded from the stimulation standpoint that visually audibly uh, energy wise and and tina i think the thing that you hit a camp that kids want to come back to that's exactly I never put it into words just like you did until you did it right now. The way that my kids felt about when they went to this thing at this other church, they said, Dad, we want to go back there. And that was the first time they've ever said that about anything. We mm -hmm. want to go back there. That's what I want here. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I hope you hear what I'm trying to do is help you pull out. Sometimes we use phrases that has a whole lot in there that your picture might be different than my picture. But when we put descriptors to it, and even, so I'm gonna probe the phrase quality interaction with Jesus. We're just gonna keep digging here a little bit. Um, describe what that quality interaction with Jesus is. So I have terms that the, that the children will be heard, that they will be mentored and they will be seeing model behavior of leadership. So someone's gonna hear them, you know, where they're coming from and where they're, what they're bringing. And then someone's going to step in and work with them on mentoring toward any type of desired outcome. And then, like I said, the model leadership behavior that they're giving the students Mm -hmm. So in the initial, in the paperwork that you sent me, um, at the top, there's a title, Hope in Motion, Summer Camp with Character Development, Transforming Children into Christian Leaders. How might you take all that we've just talked about and Phrase it in a compelling way. Well, we could use the words of George Bond, but then I'd be, I'd be guilty of plagiarism. He called it spiritual champions. <laughs> Making spiritual champions at camp. <laughs> I can't use it. <laughs> I think it's about forming relationships and bonds with people that are good role models for them and not just employees of a camp who are providing a service. But they're meeting people of, of good moral character who are aware of how they behave and how that affects the behavior of the children in the camp. So I don't know how that phrases. What I'm going to say, please don't take it as that um, I have any disagreement with the concept of Christian camp. Uh, are you marketing to Christians or are you marketing to the community? Community. Okay. So do we need to lead with the word Christian? I mean, it's, it's at the church, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. Well, I think we got, a, we got a problem because uh, we like to do both because I think the market, <clears throat> as I, as I, as I uh, described in that two-page summary, there's a market of 150,000 children within a 10-mile radius. Many of these are, are Christians who were looking for a quality camp experience, 
of, and they're willing to pay for it, and or they they need experience, but their their income leveling with with two incomes won't won't quite get there. On the other hand, you do want to have such an exciting camp that you're going to be attracting uh, unchurched, close to speak, so to speak, in that in that group, and also pull them in as well. I don't know that you. If you go one way, you're gonna kind of not. You might distance yourself from the other group too. You know. I, I, Tina, I see. Oh, yeah. I think maybe right now, what <laughs> hate to put it this way. What what are the word? Well, I guess we're, what we really need is what are the best words for this document? Because how we ultimately market it could be multiple different ways, depending on whether we're sending the literature through the public school system or we're marketing it through other churches in the area, that could be two different forms of the, you know, two different versions of the same document or same sales pitch or whatever you want to call it. But I guess really the impetus today, because we have a deadline in two weeks, is what's what's the best thing for this proposal? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So whenever we're writing a grant, we're always speaking to what the grantor is looking for. And as I read the grant guidelines, uh, what the buzzwords that step sh really shined out to me was that we would shine bright the gospel. And so in what way are we gonna highlight that here of shining bright the gospel? And I hear an undertone of that, of reaching people beyond Christians. Not at the exclusion of Christians, but that our intentions are beyond that. Well, I think that's the whole premise of the gospel is sharing good news. So if yeah, you yeah. make it an exclusive sounding camp for Christian people, then you've already failed. Because yeah, people will self-exclude sometimes. Yeah. So, um, okay. So for this document, in the proposed initiative section, to look very specifically, the last two sentences of the introduction of target population, the sentence starts children going into grades two through six. I feel like that's really a pro belongs in the proposed initiative section. Okay. Just over the very top. Okay. Very top. The last two sentences to go up to the initiative portion. Okay. Because for me, that answers the question, what are you doing? The proposed initiative should say that. Okay. Um, in an overall statement, the guidelines say no more than two pages. Right. Where so it's got to get condensed. Yeah, to me, the proposed initiative is supposed to be just a title. Uh, and we were trying, I was trying to actually condense that into a really catchy title to you know, because a, a lot of grants. The third, first, the, first, the title is the, is the hook, and and that and that's what's going to catch someone's eye. Um, so I didn't think that that the proposed initiative with that that was that was supposed to be more. You know, if you start loading that with uh, multiple sentences, it's going to become more than a mm -hmm. you know a I can. But it, it seems like it's going to be go counterintuitive to what they're looking for. I'm just, I'm looking at the guidelines as I'm looking at this. And of course we have the unenviable or in the unenviable position that we're part of a group that's doing it this new way the first time. Mm -hmm. so we're sort of in uncharted waters to a degree, you know, all we have to fall back on is their guidelines as opposed to what the people last year did and looking at 
the, the exa you know their version of their two page version. We don't have that. So I better read. <laughs> you you had worked on one two years ago, and that was in the Baltimore uh, area. And so this one, they've 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 kind of refined it down. They're trying to screen out lots of folks. And if you read in in the in the, the, their their website. They, they, they see two, two different types of grants here. Well, well, the first one, there's one ministry outreach and expansion, and then there's, and then there's one from like 25,000 to 100, what they call micro grants. Then there's one from, 20, from 100 to 250,000, which is one the LCF is going to come alongside and provide other levels of expertise. And they want, in, in the, the, the specific questions they want to answer are how much you're asking for in the grant, how much you're paying for, and how much you expect us to come alongside with. So despite the fact that it's a summary of two pages, you have to really know a lot about what you're going to be doing to make that statement. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, and so some of the things you see in this in this two-page summary, I put them in here for someone like yourself to look at and say, well, there's things in here I probably wouldn't put in, but this is going to help me to understand what they're trying to do. And then we can come back here and we can pull things out that aren't needed because actually it's already a half a page too long. It's, it's mm -hmm. going to be it's right. very specific type, uh, font sizes because when they go to that level of specificity, tell me the font size and the number of pages, they're pretty serious about that. And uh, and so uh, I, you know I, we got to hone this, we got to hone and refine this thing down to get, at least get to the next stage where we can really then bring to bear all these different you know uh, you know topics. Mm -hmm. So as I look at the goals even, I would want to answer the phrase, campers will, and state the goal. So even if you look at number one, just read the number one paragraph under goals, how would you finish that sentence? Campers will... Yeah. So it's like a teaching objective is what you're saying. Right, yeah, okay. Okay. You know that. Um, in number four, are campers being exposed to Jesus only during the worship time? Well, the model that this was based on is the one that Pastor Whitfield's children went to up in up in Bloom, uh, Wisconsin. And in that model, what they do is the students come in and they, the intake is at 930. And then there's a high activity, high energy music, and the kids go immediately into some group activities out, outside, they burn off a lot of energy, and then they go into their special activities that they've pre-chosen, which is what, one of the huge motivational things of this camp. And then we, they wind that down in, uh, in terms of having lunch, and then after lunch, they have uh, some more music, but the music is much more, uh, less high energy, and then they go into the message. So there's a group message, and then they break up into individual uh, small groups. And the small groups deal with topics of the day. So let's say there was a topic of bullying going on, you know, and that was being a very important thing in schools. So you just you discuss that topic, and they'd have a very tailored message by that. And then after that, you you would uh, you would go into a uh, uh, complete the activities that you start in the morning. So if you were in music or or art, you finish the project or something else, and then that would be the rest of the afternoon. So that's kind of like a thumbnail sketch of the pattern, or the ebb and flow of activity. So. There's, a, there's about an hour, hour and a half time in the middle of the day when they get a message, Christian focused message, and a Christian focused small group dealing with a topical issue. But I would also suspect that the whole day, if the, lead, if the leaders are trained and doing the way, I would, they're, they're being exposed all day long, maybe not as obviously, but just by the fact that they've got you know how the how the, the leaders are treating and talking to the students you know and if they answer questions who knows what the questions might be so maybe directly and indirectly it's happening all day um some more deliberate other times less deliberate if that makes if i'm saying that clearly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the way number four is worded I'm just trying to help you expand the language a little bit. They're not just encountering Jesus in the worship time. Right. You know, they're in, what you just described was really a very um, holistic way of experiencing Jesus in these different ways. Right. Right. And so to highlight that. Okay. 
That's a good word, though. The other thing I heard that is a, a unique part of this proposition is that ability to choose activities, that there's choices. Huge. Um, to me, that's a value add to the camp. And that should be high on your list that is that it's not buried somewhere. That that should be obvious. Uh, don't miss the goal of developing leaders. That's that's another key piece of what you're doing. So my disclaimer at this statement is that I try to think through grace-oriented language and less law-oriented language. And so in number six, the words biblical obligation hit me hard. Um, I would change the words to motivated by the gospel. That's a preference on my part. My part. As you look at what you've created so far based on what we've talked about, and just tell me your thoughts. What's standing out? What are you thinking? I think the goal section can probably be, there might be six items, but they would be almost more bulletized um, by using your phrase, campers will. I think we can definitely squish that down and, and be much more on, on point and um, hopefully hit them hard, you know, hit them, hit them real fast and hard and, and be very specific. Um, I think we can take in those two sentences that the, that you recommended go up to the proposed initiative. I think we can re take, do that and reword it. That. That's e That's pretty easy. And now that I reread it again with that, thought process of yours that makes that makes a lot of sense so thank you for that um, and although we have in the measurements and performance target section about the the, the campers selecting in that section that probably needs to be pulled out of the measurements and performance targets and, um, and under the goals, um, under the goals area. Um, mm -hmm. Because people like choice. <laughs> well, choice is a part of leadership. True. True. So choice is a part I, of so leadership. So highlight that early on. Mm -hmm. um, All those things that are value adds really bring them front and center. You know, what's different? What sets this apart from any other summer camp? Um, in the plan of action, the understand the staffing section produced some questions for me. Um, and Sometimes it's just in wording. So it made me wonder, summer camp coming about in the summer, preschool director um, will have overall oversight of the camp. And the question I wrote down is this in addition to the preschool, how, like, I, I wonder if you might just somehow 
put a thought of how that balances um, in responsibilities or that she'll have so many staff to, to work with her. I do see camp director and then um, a consultant. When I think of a grand tour, I'm thinking that they're looking at this initial two page thing and saying, okay, have they thought through how all the piece of, of how it's really going to work? Is this, if we give the money, is it actually going to come to fruition? Um, so I don't want to belabor it, just a, that's the question it produced in my mind of how, how those responsibilities might get balanced. So are you saying that they, they, they want to see someone with a specific title of camp director in there? No, not necessarily. I, I, I was just thinking about a school director and the level of responsibilities that happen with, with that and how that's balancing with camp responsibilities too. So it might it's, be a, a verbiage thing. Mm -hmm. Probably call it as a maybe just think of another title for you. Well, mm -hmm. interesting. School director. The interesting yeah. thing is that program. the summer camp is the program for the summer. So I don't really have a tremendous amount of other responsibilities. So if that's how that sounds, then that needs to be completely changed. Because we don't offer school service, we don't offer preschool in the summer, just the camp. Yeah, so, yeah just so just take my reflection in mind and figure out how to just put that. And I was really thinking having you know, directed summer stuff with VBS and that kind of thing, all the prep work that comes beforehand, really it was that overlap of the end of school and the beginning of camp that I was thinking about on the plate of a school director. Mm. It's true. Um, I would say too, just kind of as, as an overall formatting, the, the plan of action can just be some bullets too. I don't know that you need all of the detail that you have here. Well, that's good because we got to get rid of. Stuff. Well, yeah, I think we start by the first page, we can tear it down and then we can go from there. So okay. I don't want to miss what I hear you saying. You're saying the hook is the humanitarian or community change that we wish to provide. That is the hook. Yeah. Yeah. So we need to figure out a way to convey what we're going to do for the community or the students or the, you and know, their family. Yeah. And the, what, are, what are we doing? How do we describe that? Yes, we're providing the summer camp and it's pretty awesome, but what are the outcomes of that that are life changing and do appeal to someone? Yeah. yeah, the summer, the summer camp, camp is the means to that, whatever that that is. And so if you just, let's probe that hook a little bit. Uh, now, in light of all we've said, what, beyond the summer camp experience, I should say it this way, as a result of the summer camp experience, What life change or what value add have you brought to the children and families who have engaged? Given the parents peace of mind of knowing that their kids are in a safe, wholesome, you know, where they've blossomed and grown both maybe um, not only physically, but spiritually regardless of what the parents intent was at the beginning of the camp, maybe it was just pure convenience because it was the place down the street and it was easy drop off and pick up. 
or it met their price point and they didn't care about the it was at a church or not at a church but the fact that they saw a positive change in their kid at the end of the summer who wanted to go every day or at least most every day because kids are kids are going to complain at some point they're just going to happen but um, a place that the kids were happy at mm -hmm. i'd say leadership closer relationship with jesus or a new relationship with Jesus. And with positive memories. So do you think it would be wise to create some kind of a culminating measuring tool for the end of the camp? Like the... It seems like we need a measuring tool. Something that says our camp will blah, blah, blah. Like, we will deliver, I don't know, maybe maybe our trainers will go through some kind of training program where they're, where it's a proven program where they are trained leaders or some kind of thing like that. So what, they have some kind of legitimacy to being a leader or having leadership skills. Mm -hmm. And then... So the, can I ask a question on that one? Yeah. Just to clarify, if I'm hearing what you're saying. Um, so the way I'm interpreting that is to identify what are some of those measurable indicators to know that we've been successful in, in our goals, not just in conducting the event or the activity, but really in starting to achieve the outcomes we were looking for. Am I, are we tracking together? Yes, and my, my biggest fear is that we're saying we're doing this, but we really don't have a measurable tool to use to say we did this. Mm -hmm. If we could measure it, I think it would be more fundable because then we could say, you know, at the outset, we know whatever. Mm -hmm. Maybe we have a follow-up program. I don't know. Something that... But I have a sense that you would like to be able to say that following this camp experience these campers are going to have a different set of skills based on their experience with Jesus to allow them to handle life challenges in a more positive, constructive way. Um, I love that. Uh, the thing is, you know, you test it, with, you have to say, at the end of the camp, they will be exposed to a, a trial by fire. I mean, you have to create some thing out there that would and see how you know they didn't strike out, but they were they were constructive and they were tough and resilient. I don't know what that would be, you know. How you would... So just 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 sit with that for one moment. Here's what I wrote: Following this camp experience, campers will be better prepared to handle life challenges. So when you think of let's just think of the campers of students participating in a camp as participants. What kind of life challenges would you hope that students could better handle, would be better prepared to handle as, as kids? Rejection, bullying, mm -hmm. failure, failure, home problems. Oh, yeah. Conflict resolution. And those could be like almost, I don't want to say subjects in the camp, but also topics in the camp of how do you deal with it. The way the topics, the small group topics. Yeah. That, that, that's how they weave. I think they did, they wove those small group topics in, uh, depending upon what, what was currently, you know, appropriate or, or interesting or whatever they had some background in at the end of camp. Mm -hmm. Pastor and I have talked about this unfortunate fact that we are raising children who don't know how to handle when things, when they're rejected, when when kids are rejected, not paid for something, not they don't know how to handle that because they've been raised in a society where everyone's included and everyone gets a prize and everyone, which is not a bad thing, but when you get into public school and 25% of the people don't like you, you know we have school shootings. That's a reality. What are we doing wrong as a society that's causing normal children to behave so abnormally? Yeah. And and what can we do in in our efforts to create a more stable-minded 
behavior reaction to those types of things. And I think that's where we are as a society. <laughs> well, I know with my own kids, things have not gone the way they had hoped in life, you know, whether it be the college that they wanted to go to or things. And I've tried to tell my children over and over again that God has a plan for them. It might not be your plan, but to remind them of that. That's a beautiful point. Um, that God's plan is bigger and better. And if it doesn't, if things don't work out the way that you think that you want them to, you weren't picked on this team or you weren't picked mm -hmm. for that academy because we've got a school situation where kids can be mm -hmm. uh, apply for certain special programs to understand that when things don't go your way, whatever that is, whether it because of the baseball team or the school or the grade you got or the fill in the blank, that it's because God's plan is bigger and better. Mm -hmm. I still think there needs to be some type of stability built into the curriculum, however it's created, so children are understanding that it doesn't matter if someone doesn't like you, you know, or it doesn't matter. Their behaviors don't have to be what you think they should be. How are you going to handle it when they're not what you like, you know, and um, how do you react? How do you... And I think sports is a great way to start teaching that. Absolutely a great way. You know, what it's making me think about is that all of this boils down to identity issues and knowing regardless that God loves us. You know, even amidst our successes, amidst our failures, God loves us. On a personal note, um, my my I have two sons. They're both in their 30s. My youngest just turned 30 this year, and he's going through a really tough time, and has not, other than times he's been home and gone to to church with us, has not really been connected to a faith community in uh, probably at least 10 years, and. Through this tough time, I was so joy filled to know how he thinks about God and that God is for him, not against him. You know, and I think those are things that even in a summer camp experience, we can impart to children that is so much part of their formation of how they see the world. I'm wondering if there, there might not be some simple, simple self-assessment, um, and maybe not for the preschoolers, but maybe for the, the elementary children that are readers. Um, you know, even simple statements of those life challenges, and, and however you might phrase the, the prompts to s help them indicate maybe at the beginning of the summer and the end of the summer, how prepared they are to handle those different kinds of challenges. Hmm. Similar to a testimony of what did you get out of this? Mm-hmm. You know, and that really helps you come back and develop, design it with, with intention to make sure that there's elements in there that are helping them grow in those areas. So what I get out of this is just providing a camp for children that's a wholesome place is not really what the grant organization is going to be looking for. They're going to be looking for something that is making an impression and a lasting effect on, on the community or the people that come through. Mm -hmm. The other piece that I would like to see just a little bit stronger because all of this is focused on the camp. And the one connection that I make to the church, uh, even though the camp is an initiative of the church, but when it comes to an ongoing relationship with the congregation is on page one under goals number four, when it mentions worship time, and then uh, may encourage unchurched parents to attend our new services. 
uh, specifically designed for unchurched families. To me, that still sounds, it's very passive. And so what intentional relationship building elements might you think about incorporating where, and it may be there, it's just not stated, it's silent in the, in the text of how are we intentionally reaching to those families beyond summer camp? that helps to build that bridge to the congregational life and relationships within the congregation. One thing we talked about doing with the preschool, the school in general and connecting it to the church is I suggested that we create prayer partners from the church to each one of the teachers, each one of the staff and also prayer partners to each one of the children. And so that gives an investment from the church into the lives of the people that are coming through the doors of the school. So maybe something of that nature where, you know, they are assigned, someone who's willing to walk with them, uh, you know, in the next <coughs> few months or something after camp and is praying for them or just prayer. You know, mm -hmm. and that's probably the most important thing we can do for any situation. And on a, I guess on a different note, doing something like a, would it be a picnic, joint event mm -hmm. of somehow, um, basically having the church come to the camp, you know, yeah. to make them, whether it be the beginning, the middle, or the end, or, or multiple times, have mm -hmm. joint events, or have events that are um, to make the families that are family oriented, not just the campers, but the whole family. Um, aware of what's offered beyond the camp hours. So along this line, I, I, I didn't I put it in here, but I was thinking about it after I sent it in. Uh, we can have a uh, uh, kind of a, a, of a highlighting of who uh, might be, you know, instructors in this camp as how they making their testimony as how they came to Jesus and what it means for them. So I'm expecting a kind of a cross fertilization within many of the youth in the church to be involved in the camp as well. And we can have personal personal witnessing there, personal, you know, and we can talk about that in, in this application that we actually have seen our own sons and daughters here uh, being, being transformed by, mm -hmm. by getting ready for this experience you know, in, in, in the church. So we, have, we actually have evidence for that. And what I would want to hear too is what difference does that make in my day to day? collaborations are going to be important in this uh, so say more when you say collaborations tell me what you're thinking about so if we say that we have a list of people who work in the in a field of Christian leadership or Christian some like an outreach resource list for them and we notify these other folks that we're going to be doing these outreach resource connections does that help with the validity of the program because we have a follow-up measure? And, and so give me a picture of like what you're talking about when you say outreach resource connections. So I, I know that there's, I'm saying hypothetically, I know that there is a leadership group, maybe people at a college locally that are willing to field questions or issues that a youth that came through our camp might have. And so there's a resource for them. Mm -hmm. So maybe on specialized topics, is that what you're thinking? I'm just wondering if it will make it a better program for them if they have any kind of follow-up or will it make it, will it bring some, a solidness to it 
if it has a follow up. Mm -hmm. necessary. You know, it's making it's making me think about um, the springboard that the camp can provide even around those topics. So kind of as an ongoing something, um, those topics that come out during camp time, how might you thread those through the other part of the year that keep families engaged? You know, maybe it's maybe it's forums around spe special topics. I don't, it, I don't know, I'm in brainstorm mode. <laughs> I don't, um, I mean, if you have something solid, you feel like you could add to this. I don't know that in the summary proposal, I would make a stretch. Okay. Yeah, probably don't want to waste our limited space. <laughs> so to there's already enough that has to be squeezed in as it is. While, I mean, this certainly has to have rationale behind it. Um, but I'm thinking, like, from a perspective of thinking, why is it important to the people we're serving? And also, why is it important to the goals of LCEF. You know, if LCEF's goals are shine bright the gospel, um, to put that in the lens really of the value we're bringing to the community. Over the, the rationale of, uh, it's just a, it's a framing thing of how we present the information. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, it does actually. Yep. Um, I think we're the light in the city on a hill though. And we have to remember that each person that's involved as a leader also is the shine bright piece. Mm -hmm. It, what I see is really that ripple effect. And I go back to that early statement I made about the camp kids want to come back to. It, in developing the relationships, developing the leadership, and having it be in a fun environment. I think I want the passion to come through and the excitement to come through in the text. And the information here is really good. It felt academic. Okay. So it needs, it needs more heart. All right, how, beyond what you've said so far, how might you summarize your takeaway from our conversation? And in what ways has this been helpful or not? I, I need to leave, but um, I would say what you just said at the end, that um, taking a step back from the kind of the facts and the figures and including those still including what needs to be included in that regards, but framing it in the, you know, in the, in a more heartful way, I guess. Um, remembering who our target audience is, quite frankly, in this case, it's the folks from LCEF and what their goals are and, um, and, and just, and, and using that as our guide to changing the phrasing where it needs to be changed and improved. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your time. I'm going to let them finish up. It was nice chatting. You're with welcome. You know, <laughs> nice to chat with you. Too. <laughs> Thank you.
by How about anybody else? Takeaways with well, how was this helpful? Our third conversation on this topic. So each time I talk with you, it's always been a blessing and very, um, I try to incorporate your thoughts and, and weave it in. So I think from where I, we were with the first time you saw it, I think it's greatly, in my mind anyway, it's greatly improved. And I think this time you were able to get feedback directly from the key players here who are going to be actually running the camp and, and, and you saw pastor's thoughts on it. So I think now we're going to have to put this, where well, we make more revisions along the lines that we've talked about, and I think we'll make it much stronger. Uh, and I, I get what you're saying. I'm, I come from an academic background, and uh, we write grants for medical research. So the first thing you do is you always have a, is it disease? You know, what disease does somebody, we've got us, two million people are sick and we'll have 100,000 die from whatever, you know, and, and here, this, this is going to, you know, another piece of the puzzle. Right? So, uh, you, so you do have to create an image, you're right, of a human focus image, even though everyone knows kind of, there's a lot of monotony and routine stuff. And they do want to see some specific details. And I think we do, I just love a couple of quick questions. One is, I think it would be very useful to emphasize the expertise of the new preschool director and the ongoing expertise of the existing camp, uh, or the existing teacher who's doing the camp that we have now and a smaller version of. I think that's going to be a, very, a strength to this. And, and mm -hmm. so we just have to make that very clear that, that these are experienced individuals who, who have a heart, a heart for the Lord, but they're also very, very skilled people. And so they should, LCF will have no concerns about be, being able to manage, actually, and execute this camp here. Yeah, so I'm looking at the question here on the guidelines that say, how are you going to do the work? And that staffing is a great piece of that. So I think just to really highlight the the value adds to having those key people in place is, is important. Um, the other phrasing I would point out to you is in the very last number 13 on page three. And again, my preference is to softer language. Um, LCEF is being asked to pay $100,000 for the equipment. Um, should it be awarded, the request of $100,000 would be used to something like that. Uh, okay. I got you. Got it. <laughs> yeah, and then I guess one of the things that we have to kick around ourselves is I'm not at all familiar with the costs here. So these are numbers right now. You know, we again we have to have some idea of what we're going to offer to know what we're going to have to buy and what kind <laughs> of site uh, preparations and who knows what else might go into things that they would fund to have some realistic content. And I was hoping that you might have some insight as to whether you think this grant is better at the 25 to 100K level or the 100 to 250K level. Do you have any, any sense of that? I think my gut reaction for a summer camp initiative is to keep it in the lower bracket. Because the reality is it's a three-month initiative, or uh, it's not even that, is it? 11 weeks. 11 weeks versus an application that they're going to receive that's for a year-round initiative. I, I'm trying to think through the head of the grantor. That's exactly what I, what I would, I'm very, very thankful for that thought. I didn't, I didn't think of it that way, but you're right. This is a summer initiative, and we're going to be competing with people who have full year initiatives. Right. Uh -huh. um, and I, I, my sense is that the way they're doing it now, when you get into that higher bracket, there's probably other costs involved, or maybe that all comes as part of the granting package, that they have a whole other set of services that are 
support wraparound services that also walk through the process with you. So um, it makes me wonder is, and I'm not diminishing your summer camp, please don't hear it that way, but you know, when it, it's that versus a year round program, I wonder if the, they're gonna think that fits into that bracket of, of all the services. I don't know. And I don't know oh, that camera view is better. I didn't touch it. Do not know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Was this helpful today? The floor. I, there, it went back. Yeah. yeah. Was this helpful today? Oh, yeah. Very good. All right. So where do we go from here? Well, actually, I had wanted to, Pastor Whitfield had to leave. I actually wanted to talk about how you view the structure, as we had discussed a little bit about, you know, involving your services beyond this point. Uh, we're going to probably send this in, and then um, with with the change we've had here, uh, do you think another review would be appropriate, or or uh, before we get to the you know talking about hourly rates and things like that? Um, I'm I'm happy to read it. I'm concerned about schedule between now and the 15th. Um, if you can get it to me by the 8th, I can I could do a review. Okay. Okay, so I guess that's what we'll do. We'll, we'll either get it to you by the 8th or we'll go with what we've got and then uh, let you know, I think, I, I think there's a month, let's see, the deadline is June, I think, Another month and a half is when they would let you know if you've been invited. Because the deadline to get the full grant is September, so they're going to need, you're going to need, I would seem, as much time as possible. So they try to turn this around pretty quickly. Uh -huh. And then we would just prayerfully be talking to you again, I guess, if we get uh -huh. okay to go ahead. Now, if you don't get this grant, what happens? Well, uh, so this is. You know, we, we're going to be applying to the uh, perhaps the LWML National and the um, uh, the apparently the, the district and maybe the Senate is interested in these camps. I know that this the district, the Southeastern District, wants to do something along these lines. So this this proposal will be migrated up through to the district level by by Pastor Whitfield, and it, it may be become part of their budget perhaps for at least a little bit. So there are other pieces that we may, you know, we may, so this is this is not just a, you know, a flash in the pan, so to speak. We we're going to keep we'll keep at at this, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That, and that's kind of a, an interesting point because, you, you know, um, if we're going to do this camp in 2019, we have to start now with resources on hand, um, and we can't really wait until this grant gets funded, right? I mean, so that's always an interesting question. You know, I, I guess they assume they're going to be repla replacing money you've already spent, assuming you get the grant. But if you don't get the grant, you, I, I don't know how that works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's, I mean, it's a significant request and a, a significant budget, too, to be able to carry it off. And it makes me think, you know, what, what does happen if you don't get the funding? Um, to think about any ongoing consideration between your team and me um, and just based on today's conversation and thinking beyond the kaleidoscope grant um, it in what ways do you feel like I could be helpful to you I wish pastor Whitfield was here <laughs> I mean I can't um, I mean I'm I'm kind of narrow focused on the grant so I don't have that kind of a past or perspective perhaps Bev has yeah. I can think of other grants I would like to get my hands on to do other things I want to start an infant toddler program here in the fall uh -huh. and I want to expand the school age programming here because we don't have a before and after school program where we pick kids up from school and drop them off and there's a need for that so I would like to purchase a couple of um, mini buses and um, begin to take children back and forth to school. Mm -hmm. um, I also want to expand the food program in the fall and offer meals 
breakfast, lunch, and snack, which we are not doing now. Um, and I would like to step up the pay scale a bit and um, uh, undergird the benefits packages that the church is offering to full-time employees. Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, I do have some some huge, and I would like to go for accreditation, and that takes money. Mm-hmm. And you can't you can't just apply for accreditation without a very solid program, and that requires money. So, there are things I'd like to do with the school. And mm-hmm. um, I feel like money is going to be a limiting factor for me. So if you have any clues on what might be out there in a grant form for that type of thing, I think that's, it's important. You know, we, we just opened our doors for even discussing infants and I have two infants already inquiring. So mm-hmm. it's not going to take long to fill eight spots. So at that point, I don't know. I just think we need to look at what can enhance the quality that we're offering here. What can bring, mm-hmm. it, bring it into more training and more, uh, more of a training ground even for people. Mm-hmm. You know, sort of like- yeah, one of the things, um, I'm part of a, a team that's leading the startup mission in Baltimore, Faith and Work Enterprises, which was where I encountered Pastor Whitfield because I was manning a booth there at the Southeastern District Convention. And what I'm really appreciating in that whole process is the the ability to engage other community resources in aspects of the mission where we can engage them. So, for instance, we're trying to bring on a case manager. We don't have funding for that at the moment. But that's an aspect of the mission that is not specifically faith-based it's helping people with their housing and their transportation and food vouchers and those kind of things um so we had a meeting with the united way two days ago where they may be either able to fund the case manager or they are now training certifying and employing case managers and instead of providing entities funding for that they provide the support by actually providing the case manager. They employ them and deploy them. So I say all that to say sometimes there's aspects or sources, resources that are available to us that we would not have thought to explore before. Um, so the, my My other hat is as a ministry development coach, and I work with individuals and teams, you know, looking at creating sustainable kingdom focused ministries. And so if maybe a few coaching conversations like that, and I don't come with the posture of a consultant. I hope you felt that today that, you know, I'm hoping helping you discover really what's in your area and what is going to best fulfill the vision that God's given you. You know, that may be something that can help you shape it. Um, On my email, maybe you guys all got it. I'll shoot you my resume so you can see really what my background looks like. And it's got access to my website to see what's there. And if that would be helpful, maybe we can consider something like that. Okay, I appreciate your time. Okay. Very good. Well, I'll look to hear from you and we'll see where we go from there. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great afternoon. Blessed day. Blessings. Blessings.